the Cars, Drones, Computers. Today we're going to be going over five different things that I like about the Osmo Pocket and five different things that I think could use a little bit of improving. Let's go ahead and get started. First off, the specs of this thing. You get 4K, 60 frames per second. You get your slow motion, 120 FPS at 1080p, which is cut frame, so it's, it zooms in a little bit. To have that kind of performance in such a small little device, uh, the panorama shots are nice, the motion lapse, time lapse, it has a lot of good features. And just having mechanical gimbal makes your footage way smoother no matter what you're doing. Another feature that I really like here is the face tracking. So as I move the Osmo Pocket, it does a pretty decent job of keeping track of my face. I've had some issues when it comes to trying to keep track of fast things up close and then it'll, it'll lose it. And if you turn around for too long, sometimes it'll lose it too. But overall, it's pretty good and uh, quite stabilized. I really like the quick start of it. So to start it up, you just press the right button here, hold it. It takes about four seconds and it's ready to go. Press the record button and there you go, we're recording. Um, it has a couple different modes, so you can go through, you can do follow, uh, which just kind of smooths everything that you're doing. And if you do FPV, it basically follows your tilt. So you can get a little bit more creative if you're riding a roller coaster or even uh, you want to flip it upside down and track somebody, it's a little bit easier that way too. And there's also tilt locks, which uh, keeps the, the gimbal perfectly planted so that way it uh, makes some really nice uh, smooth footage. I like to use that for my B-roll shots. I really like the touch screen on it. That, that was a great, uh, great addition. Uh, it does have a button here on the screen that you can control the gimbal up and down, but it's a little hard to reach, so I think it'll be nicer once they actually have the controller wheel accessory out. It doesn't have all the settings and adjustments that you can find if you connect it to your phone, uh, but it, it has enough to get the job done. So if you're out somewhere and all you have is this, you can probably get something recorded half decently. The noise reduction they have built in does work pretty well. All right, so let's go over some of the issues that I've had since I've had this. So I pre-ordered this and I got it December 12th from Best Buy. And uh, one of the issues that I've had quite a bit was the autofocus going in and out. If you're trying to film something, I'd say three feet or less, you're going to have more autofocus problems. If you're trying to go something five to 10 feet out, you're probably gonna do good. If you're trying to do landscapes, it's probably gonna be okay. But I just noticed that every time I, I try to get in close, it, uh, sometimes it'll hunt or it'll just be a soft focus or you'll have to just sit there and hold it, especially if you're trying to get almost a macro shot. You need to really be, just sit there and hold it for a sec and then it'll focus, it'll kick in and then it'll be fine. But uh, it's, it's something I definitely hope they fix in future firmware updates. Another thing, this is $350. It doesn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which I kind of find surprising. Uh, the camera that you're watching me on right now, it's a $500 uh, Nikon D5300. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. If I go to the Session 5, which is not even made anymore, um, this has Wi-Fi, and I'm able to connect to it and everything, and when you look at the size comparison, it's not too bad. Now, some have made the argument that it's because the battery is, is you know, they use all this space for the battery. Well, it's an 850 milliamp battery. It's a 1,030 milliamp battery here in the Session. So, I know there's a lot of complicated electronics in there, and uh, I think they, I really wouldn't mind if they made it a half inch longer. It still fit in my pocket anyways, and uh, you get a little bit more extra battery life, so. I think there's a little bit of improving there that they could do. It's been out for several weeks and uh, all the reviews that I've seen of the uh, larger YouTube channels and the ones that get these as test samples and uh, review samples, they all they got some of the accessories. And uh, to my knowledge, with the exception of the controller wheel that just came out, I believe, yesterday or the day before, that's actually available on DJI's website, which I don't even want to buy at, I think they want $59 for it. I want to wait for the uh, combo that comes with the tripod mount, which that should just come with it or be a, a relatively cheap accessory right from the get-go, I feel. Uh, and so it comes with that, it comes with your uh, Bluetooth Wi-Fi module, and it comes with the controller wheel and a 32 gigabyte card for $109. But they haven't released that yet, so I'm hoping they release that soon so then I can get that and do uh, some more hands-on testing with that and I can show you guys how all those things work. Um, but for me, I like to use this thing on a tripod too, especially when I'm sitting here recording a video, I can just set it on the tripod and use the face tracking and it can kind of follow me here throughout the garage. And as I go through what I'm doing, I don't have to worry about if it's if I'm in frame or anything like that. So it's really good. It, it definitely has a lot of good features. And I don't mean this to be a completely negative review. I think there's a lot of impressive technology that they've crammed in such a tiny device. But as with any like first gen product, which I feel this is first gen, you know, the old Osmo was similar price bracket, but it was a rather large gimbal. And this is being the first uh, tiny thing. People compare these to say the GoPro 7. There's pros and cons to each of them. For me, I picked this because of the mechanical gimbal, and I also, I like the fact that it has the face tracking, and it has that mechanical gimbal, so I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm getting shaky footage, or if I'm going to be doing something that basically would trigger me if I was watching a video. So, hopefully, this gives you guys a little quick little idea. That's my uh, some of my thoughts and takes here on the uh, DJI Osmo Pocket. If you like this review, please give the video a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more content like this and related to cars, drones, or computers, 
then uh, please smash that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate your support. I believe I'm at 120 subscribers. So if you feel that I should have a few more subscribers, then please go ahead. And if you don't, that's fine too. And uh, thank you for your time and thank you for watching this video. Bye for now. Thank you.